Good morning. It is August 3rd and we're going to do our daily dose of good news from Psalm 78 verses 1 through 8 and then 17 through 29. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old, things that we have heard and known that our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their children. We will tell them to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders he has done. He established a decree in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel which he commanded our ancestors to teach to their children, that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and rise up and tell them to their children, so that they should set their hope in God, and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments, and that they should not be like their ancestors, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation whose heart was not steadfast, whose spirit was not faithful to God. Yet they sinned still more against him, rebelling against the Most High in the desert. They tested God in their heart by demanding the food they craved. They spoke against God, saying, Can God spread a table in the wilderness? Even though he struck the rock so that water gushed out and torrents overflowed, can he also give bread or provide meat? For his people. Therefore, when the Lord heard he was full of rage, a fire was kindled against Jacob. His anger mounted against Israel because they had no faith in God and did not trust his saving power. Yet he commanded the skies above and opened the doors of heaven. He rained down on them manna to eat and gave them the grain of heaven. Mortals ate of the bread of angels. He sent them food in abundance. He caused the east wind to blow in the heavens, and by his power he led out the south wind. He rained flesh upon them like dust, winged birds like the sand of the seas. He let them fall within their camp all around their dwellings, and they ate and were well filled for he gave them what they craved. Here ends the reading. And for those of you who watch church on Sunday, this might remind you a bit of Jesus feeding the 5,000. God feeding God's people in the very beginning, in the original Exodus and thinking of Jesus feeding that 5,000, of how that's reminiscent of this, of Jesus giving them what they craved, both teaching and food in that desolate place. And in this Psalm, it talks about how God gives them what they craved, even though God was angry that they were demanding it and testing God and that they didn't trust God and have faith in God. But God still was merciful and not only gave them what they needed, but gave them what they craved. Because God knows our inner desires and our inner heart and our inner longings. And God meets us even in that going beyond just our basic needs to giving us what we crave. So I think that's a wonderful thing to think about today of coming before God and admitting your cravings, admitting what it is you long for. And during the pandemic, there might be a really long list of what you're craving right now. But recognizing you can bring all of that to God so that God can meet not only your needs, but your cravings. 
And additionally, while we are all separated with the pandemic, it's a great reminder to think about the next generation. The beginning of this text over and over talks about how the people were to tell the children, their children or other children about the greatness of our God so that they would know it and so that they could pass it along to their children. So in this time where we're somewhat fragmented and apart from each other, I think there's encouragement for us to think not only of our flesh and blood children, whom we may have, or our spiritual children, who may not even be related to us, but maybe children of the congregation, maybe young people you know who are in your circle of influence, and how one of the things we're encouraged and commanded to do is to tell them of the greatness of our God so that they will know it. So it's an opportunity for you to reach out to your sphere of influence today, whether that is through writing them a card, through sending them a text, maybe an email, but creatively thinking about God, show me how to reach to young people and tell them about your greatness whether those are people within the congregation or young people in your family or your neighbors. But remind them of the greatness of our God, who not only meets our needs, but meets our cravings. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.